spoke us of this year's World Ocean Day Symposium, facilitated by the THA's Department of Marine Resources and Fisheries. Celebrating our blue heritage was the theme under which environmental stakeholders discussed the socio-economic and ecological importance of this marine protected area. Participants also talked about the creation of a multi-sectoral management strategy for the marine park. What we are looking at is a multi-stakeholder co-management approach. So everybody has a say. Uh, tourism as well. In fact, tourism is a main stakeholder because if we're talking Boko Reef, right, our main tourism attraction, but yet, so there are, there are tourism objectives as it pertains to the management, but yet there are conservation objectives and sometimes you find a tension between those two objectives. So the discussion here will be focusing on how can we harmonize the tourism objectives with the conservation objectives so that all could be happy and we manage well. I think the NGOs and the private sector they have a more vested interest in the environment, so I think they will be better to take the initiative to make this work. It was refreshing to see a lot of like-minded people, and, and, and you have stakeholders that's now coming to the realization that we need to have some kind of a protection of our marine environment that is unique to the island. It, it, it can't be governmental run, it can't be run by the government, it has, to be, it has to be the private sector, the stakeholders, the people who are involved in the environment. I like the, 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 the points about the spatial planning and zoning of the park. That's very important and that's one of the aspects of the fishing as well. Because people must know where they can go in the park and do certain activities. And that is a, a good practice. Tobago's main tourism product is the ocean, the rainforest and all that that surrounds us. But the ocean plays a big part in Tobago and um, yeah, preserving it is definitely key. Other World Ocean Day activities included beach cleanups at Kilgrin Bay and No Man's Land, along with a landfish derby at Castara. A seafood fair coming up on Friday 30th June rounds out the month of World Ocean Day activities on the island. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. We'll take a short break and come back with much more Let's Talk right after this. Stay close. Keep watching Let's Talk Tobago. <laughs> I'm sure you heard of the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. But the Mason Hall Government Primary School is taking this old adage in the literal context as their little learners are reading before large audiences. Here's more. Ably prepared by their first year teachers, Miss Myrtle George, Miss Marcia Augustine Montique, Miss Karen Roberts Andrews, and Miss Arlene Scott Heath. These budding young scholars were as ready as they can be for the school's first community reading exercise. At Mason Hall Government Primary School, we have been really advancing reading at our school at our lower level, hoping that as they matriculate, they go beyond the first year into the second and way up to the five, that we can erase the challenges that we know that many of our children in Tobago experience. Through the use of the Jolly Phonics program, infant readers are quickly able to recognize the sound of syllables before joining them to pronounce their words. Even adults, when they have to present before an audience, they have that thing weeks in advance and they're going through it weeks in advance. But because we are not promoting memorization, but mastering and harnessing the skills, the phonetic skills, they have learned and they only got the material just about 15 minutes ago. Students randomly chose their books to present in front of an audience of parents and students. Ready to read? Yes. Parents ready to listen? Yes. yes. One final high five for good measure and it was showtime. Good morning. My name is Carlos Hazel. The book I'm reading is My Dad and Me. The execution wasn't perfect, but the effort was definitely commendable. Supported by their teachers, the brave infants are sure to master the art of learning as they persisted until they got it right. What stood out to me is that 
there was authentic reading and i think that is what the teachers tried to achieve so they gave the children the, the material this morning so it wasn't something that they would have practiced over time and so the skills that were taught over the year you saw them emerging because we saw children uh correcting doing self-corrections and all of that and so we know that everything that was presented here this morning was genuine well done students you read you understood and you conquered for Let's Talk Tobago, I'm Ryan McCool. Tobago songstress Adana recently released a new hit, and no, it is not a soca. This time her vocals are on some reggae music. Here's more from her recent hit, Love Me. You know the voice, you know the name. Tobago born songstress, the one and only Adana is once again bursting speakers at home, regionally and internationally. This time, her vocals can be heard singing the genre of reggae. I love reggae, one, because I'm able to express myself, not only vocally, but I could speak about the things that I wouldn't usually um, talk about in soca. Um, you know, I love my love songs. I do have this um, one song called Love the Skin. I mean, speaking about self-love, accepting yourself wholly and solely, and just loving who you are as a person. So reggae, apart from soca, I really do love and I enjoy singing reggae and performing reggae on a whole. This song is a part of a rhythm, actually, on the Sweet Melody Rhythm. It was born out of Jamaica. Big up to Patex, the producer. I want to send love to my writer, Stephanie Joe as well who wrote the song for me and um, you know my manager reached out to me she said Adana I have this rhythm and I think you would like it and uh, from the first time I listened I said yes I love it let me get a writer on it right away I contacted Stephanie Joseph and you know I told her exactly what I was feeling at the time what I would like to sing about and she delivered a great song I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago you cannot stop this shot. The local Commonwealth Association is nearing its target of recruiting 2,000 volunteers for the Trinbago 2023 Youth Games. Here's a bit of the local recruitment process right here in Tobago. The countdown is still on for the Commonwealth Youth Games Trinbago 2023, which is carded for August. And while contractors are moving at pace to ready the venues, the local organizing committee is calling on you, the citizenry, to volunteer your time and hospitality in helping to make sure that this games is the absolute best it can possibly be. Today is just our first of many fun engagements to come as volunteers. So we just wanted to meet you, have a chat with you, and to explain to you what is required. Let me thank you up front for being here. And um, let me encourage you to view volunteerism as an opportunity to learn and grow. I'm happy that we are all on board. The athletes are going to be moving from Trinidad to Tobago at one point in time. The opening ceremony is planned to be in Trinidad, the closing ceremony in Tobago. So we expect a lot of activities. The agency recognizes the importance of ensuring that all members as volunteers become basically ambassadors for Tobago. So we decided to have this volunteer engagement because we realized that some of you didn't had signed up a long time ago and didn't hear from us. And that wasn't a good thing. So we wanted to have this to let you know that this is happening, but we have some information to share with you. My first time volunteering in a sporting event was on the tent in the Rainbow Cup. Yeah. And I tell myself, you know, me this thing has no money, you know, me really want to go and do this. But I went out and I do it and I really enjoyed it and I find it was very good. As a member of the Rugby Football Club in Tobago, it's a good opportunity to be able to give back to the youths, set an example and for them to encourage them to come out and play the sport. I'm a lover of sports, so I decided based on the knowledge I have through entries and my work, I will 
put myself out there, market myself to help the young people and to bring young people on board to let them know that this is a, a, a goal for us. It's a beauty for us to be able to participate in this sport as the Commonwealth Youth Games. So I, I love it. I just love it and I just want everybody to just come on board and volunteer. I don't think there's anything more I could say. I mean, you heard from the volunteers, you heard from the local organizing committee. If you have the opportunity and you are able, go on the Commonwealth website and click on the link to become a volunteer. It's very important. They're looking for um, just about 2,000 volunteers nationally and you still have that opportunity. So from Isaac and I, broadcasting out of Shore Park here, it's been Let's Talk Tobago and I'm Ryan McCool. We have to take a short break right now, but much more Let's Talk when we return. as a chief secretary wanted our fathers and men to know that they are loved, celebrated and valued. Me, this one feel weird. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right. Ready. Set. Go. No question. Let's go church and all. If you question, okay? We just want to show you guys how much you are appreciated, both as fathers and as men of staff. Let's go, let's go. Fatherhood is being able to nurture and bring up children and, you know, show them the right ways and principles in life. Fatherhood means, to me, um, fulfilling God's plan. Fulfilling His ordinance to us as beings on this earth to be fruitful and multiply. Do your best as a father. It's in spite of what it is, what challenges you may face, just do your best. To have a happy and blessed Father's Day. have come to the end of yet another episode of let's talk tobago but guys for more of our content you can follow us on social media you can also visit our website at www.tha.gov.tt i'm patricia nicholson richards and on behalf of all of us at the department of information office of the chief secretary tobago house of assembly thank you so much for viewing and I'll see you soon
Good morning, morning, good morning, morning.
when you're moving from place to place to place. Good morning, good morning, morning, good morning, morning. Good morning, Tobago, and welcome to the Tobago Updates Youth Morning Show. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. It is Wednesday, 28th June. We're coming near to the end of June. Very soon, we're going to be going into the July-August vacation. So, you know, we have a lot in store for you this morning on the show. And I am joined by... Luke Trim. And good morning, everyone. And for those of you tuning in as you take your morning breakfast, and those of you listening on the radio, thank you so much for choosing to be updates to start your morning on the right note. And yes, we are nearing the end of June. You know, we're going to enter that six months, the last six months. And I'm also joined by... Dwayne and Nurse, and good morning to you, Tobago, Trinidad, and wherever else you're listening us from um, this morning. I just want to remind all of you as where you guys are listening us, listening us on. Uh, we are on MNE TV, Gael, Smash Radio, YouTube, Facebook, and Channel 102 on Amplia. Yes, this is Tobago Updates Television, and this is Youth Wednesdays. So, guys, what has been happening in this space? Besides the budget, I mean, we have not had time to really delve into the budget because it was only on mm -hmm. Monday. So, but um, what has, else has been happening? Well, um, do we you know we still have to touch on the budget. You know, we, we just can't ignore it. But yes, our budget was read on Monday. I'm just hoping that sometime we can get to have that youthful discussion yes. about the budget. Cough, a cough to whoever is listening. <laughs> <Whoa>. <laughs> what else has been happening, guys? Um, recently, we saw we had a death of a very famous influence mm -hmm. in the Trinidad oh, yes, and Tobago yes, yes. space. Yeah, that was quite oh, yes. sad. Kevin one young boss, mm -hmm. aka Maureen, aka the River Witch. River Witch. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I think everybody's familiar with his videos. I know a lot of older women really loved his videos and how colourful his language was. So he yeah. was able to use the adjectives and the metaphors and the similes and his um and his energy and his endurance when it came to getting his point across. Very sharp in those words, mm -hmm. you know, very, very, mm -hmm. very sharp and, you know, pointed, if you want to say. But we have, we're going to go, we have our birthday segment coming up next. And today's birthdays are sponsored by KFC. This is your birthday shout outs on Tobago Updates, sponsored by KFC. So first we have Robert Yates. A happy birthday goes out to you, Mr. Yates. Who do we have next? Next we have Carissa Small. And belated birthday greetings are going out to you, Miss Carissa Small. Mm -hmm. Next on our list we have uh, ooh, we have um Dr. Winford James. Happy birthday, Uncle Will Uncle Winford. Um, you know, I hope you enjoy your day today. You look very young in, in this photo, by the way. You know, um, thank you for always being that inspiration to me, being that mentor, you know, keeping me on the right path. I really appreciate you, Uncle Winford, and enjoy your birthday today. All right, all right. And uh, up. birthday shout outs on Tobago Updates, sponsored by KFC. From the experts that created the Zinger Sandwich comes the KFC Crispy Barbecue Zinger. The only one I see is you. Cheddar cheese, crispy onions, the most delicious Kentucky Fried Chicken and barbecue sauce. Get ready for a whole new level of flavor. And yes, we are back. We have a special birthday. Very special. A very, very, very special, special birthday here very this morning. Um, you know, thankfully, you know, some of us are not in the police service because we are a bit, a bit trigger happy this morning. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, we, wanna, we want to wish um, a Mr. Wood. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wood, a happy, happy birthday. We have some special photos for you yes. guys this morning mm -hmm. and a special video. Yes, guys. So let's take a look at those at those photos um but uh, guys while we wait for the photos to come up you know we just really need to appreciate mr wood for discovering us all and giving us this platform here at tobago update so mr ronnell enjoy your birthday today exactly right. happy so happy birthday to you ronnell all right so what do we have on the rundown this morning 
Well, on the rundown, as per usual, we have an exciting and packed interviews for you all today. So we'll be starting off with uh, Mr. Keegan Denoon. We'll be chatting a bit about that youth work that we have here in Tobago. Then we'll be bringing on Mr. Chris Phillip as we speak about the most anticipated event to start July off that is paint. And then we'll also be having Kaylee, you know, as she discuss again that community work in the youth space. So guys, just Stay tuned with us. We have a lot in store for you. And Duane, who's up next? Up next, we have uh, a call to serve with Keegan Denoon. So um, just stay tuned for that. Yours truly. Mm -hmm. We're and... going to go over to Tobago in focus mm -hmm. at this time. Just remember to. Mediation is used as an alternative to litigation through the use of an impartial moderator and communication and negotiation techniques. The Division of Health, Wellness and Social Protection established its mediation unit in 2009 and has steadily expanded. The unit, equipped with two certified mediators, has since settled several matters, including landlord and tenant issues, merchant customer disputes, property and land, parenting, and even issues regarding the running of traditional susus. Assistant Coordinator at the Mediation Unit, Carol Spencer Edwards, further explains. We deal with family and relationship disputes, neighborhood conflicts, um, community disputes, juvenile conflicts. So the, 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 the range of issues are there. And um, as I said, we, we try to offer persons that option as against going to the court. Ms. Spencer Edwards revealed a high success rate between 70 and 75 percent, noting that a large part of the unit's success lies with the process as persons are allowed to speak freely in a safe and comfortable environment. Quite often the issues that they deal with or that they're dealing with is not really, is not out of the ballpark. It's right. just that maybe sometimes not able to, um, to sit and express and express themselves and sometimes people need sometimes you need somebody there to say here here's what let's start with or, or hold up give, give her a minute or hold up give him a minute you know the recent addition of a therapeutic counseling unit manned by eight counselors has further expanded services including a crisis hotline parenting workshop grief counseling life skill coaching marriage counseling and learning enrichment programs Services can be accessed through its walk-in services or by referral. Welcome to Youth Wednesdays on the Tobago Updates Morning Show. You're bringing us on Tobago Updates Television. My name is Dwayne Nurse, and this morning we have a call to serve um, Po, um, hosted by the, the Trinidad and Tobago Youth Ambassadors. And to lead this discussion this morning, we have none other than Keegan Denoon, no stranger to the space, no stranger to the youth space. Um, good morning to you, Mr. Denoon. Good morning, Mr. Nurse. Good morning, Tobago, and to the viewership of Tobago Updates, and thank you for having me. Of course, it's always a pleasure. Um, so tell us about yourself. We, we, we know Keegan, but, but for those who might not know, um, just tell us about Keegan Denoon. Oh, wow. Um, well, Keegan Denoon is a youth advocate. I am one who really am passionate about youth work and volunteerism and community. And so I wear many hats today. I sit here as the national president of the Trinidad and Tobago Youth Ambassadors outgoing. Um, we have a new executive coming in in October. I'm also the president of the Boko Village Council. I'm also the CARICOM Youth Ambassador for Trinidad and Tobago. I work as a program administrator in the Division of um, Community Development, where we are responsible for the youth on a GISO success program, we currently have 100 interns being trained um, in preparing them to go into the world of work. Mm. And so that's just a little bit about me. Oh, indeed, many hats, indeed, many hats. You know, um, so just, just tell us um, what, tell us about TTYA and, and, what, it, and what, is it, what it does, especially in this piece of Tobago. All right, wonderful. So the Trinidad and Tobago Youth Ambassadors is an organization that was founded in August of 2014. So next year we'll be making 10 years. I happen to be the first national president from Tobago of the organization within the time that this has been created. Uh, we are an organization that focuses on amplifying the youth voice, ensuring that youths have that place in society where they feel appreciated and they know that they can contribute meaningfully to the socio-economic development of the island. We allow you to develop 
the skills necessary to enter into the society and become a better contributing citizen. And so there are a number of young persons who go through high school, go through college, and never really get that experience right. of volunteering, of being a part of a youth organization, of, of giving back to the community. And we have seen that um, youth work and community initiatives have been dying over the years. And that is where TTYA comes in, to revitalize that kind of process within our societies and ensure that in the end, youth work volunteerism is something that people are passionate about yes. and that we can um, really bring back. You know, like how everything is coming back into yeah. style now? Bring youth work and volunteerism back into style in our communities. And, you know, indeed, that is a great, great, great feat because, yeah. um, you know, I, I worry for a youth, um, you know, especially in the face of increasing technology, um, you know, where they are more um, in their homes, they're not very much involved, mm -hmm. you know, everything is online, um, you know, and it's good to see that your the TTY is trying to bridge that gap um, between the youth and volunteerism. Um, but can I ask, just a, just to delve into the organization just a little bit, mm -hmm. um, how, how, what is your membership like, um, especially to Bego? Mm -hmm. membership if there's any at all? Of course, we have a, a large membership. However, a number of our members are currently studying and so we are going into the recruitment drive. So every year we have a batch going out to study. We have some people coming back in. And so to give you a specific number as to the active members and, right. and the inactive members would be a bit difficult. But currently we have about, say about 50 something members there or so actively in the space in Tobago. We have a lot more in Trinidad. As I said, we are a national organization. Um, almost 10 years old. Okay, that's great, that's great. Um, tell us about the, about the flyer, um, the call to serve. Um, tell us a little bit more about that and why is it important at this time? Wonderful. As I um, alluded to, we have a number of members going off to school and so to ensure sustainability and succession planning, uh, we have the national uh, regional representative program mm -hmm. and this is where you most people coming into the organization. And so we really teach you in that program how to be independent, how to be creative, how to be innovative. You are basically the liaison officer between your district or community and the Trinidad and Tobago Youth Ambassadors. So you are going to tell us what your district needs, what your community needs, and we are going to see how best we could support that initiative. So say for example, you live in Mason Hall and you come out on the block one day and the boys say, well, we want to learn how to do resumes. You know, we're looking for jobs, we want to know how to do resumes. Uh, we want to get into carpentry. We want to um, learn how to do business management or how to start a business. He would now bring that information to us. And we would sit, design a plan or a policy of how we can assist the young people in that area. Come, do a program, find a facilitator, fund it, seek sponsorships to ensure that all the young people within the, the, the length and breadth of the island of Tobago and Trinidad and Tobago, are given the best opportunity for them to succeed. Right. And, and, and on the screen, guys, we have the flyer, and, and we're just going to delve into uh, uh, that a little bit late, just a little bit late in terms of the information and where you guys can apply, etc. But for now, it's on the screen. Um, you know, just tell us about um, the, the programs that you guys would have had um, in the past and some of the future programs that you guys have had and what impact that it would have had on the Tobago space as it relates to youth. Oh, wonderful. So... Our flagship program is the National Youth Ambassadors Program. And this is a program where we really train you for an extensive period, a rigorous training program. Uh, um, approximately how long? Is sometimes it's a month, six um, weeks right. of rigorous training. We give you that, um, the information of how to do policies, how to do plans, how to run the organization, um, how to apply for sponsorships, time management, conflict resolution, all the mm. things that are necessary in leading our organization. So we basically prepare you to lead. Right. Um, a number of other programs that we have is the STEP program, that's a school transition empowerment program, where we're going to the primary schools and talk to the young people who are now transitioning into high school. Right. Because it is a culture shock, it is. going from primary school into high school and seeing how best we can equip them and prepare them and assist them in that transitionary period. We also have something called Girls Take Over Parliament. I'm sure you would have heard of that. And this is where we, um, we have a program where it's only females in the parliament right. or in the Tobago House of Assembly. And um, empowering the young women, ensuring that they have their place and their space in society as it pertains to leading right. governance on the island. Uh, we also have Project Smile, 
where we do um, give backs to the, to, the, to the communities in terms of um, uh, care packages. During the COVID, we would have given out a number of hampers. That's great. We also have a book drive where we collect books from, from um, past students and so to assist um, individuals who may not be able to afford the books. We, we give you free um, textbooks, free um, notebooks, free pens, pencils, and all these programs. And these are things that happen just before school opens. We have a, a backpack drive as well where we buy book bags and we fully stock them and give them out in the communities. And that is where our regional representatives come in. But you are now able to select persons within your community to who you would see I need and we are able now to assist them. And these are things that we really don't advertise right. in terms of the media because we don't want to um, take persons suffering right. and make a, a, a media right. um, thing out good. of it. So I just want to, I just want to, um, you know, stick a plug there, especially for those parents who, um, you know, are cannot cannot afford, you know, this this time around for school books and school supplies. Um, you know, I, I just want you guys to take note of of this initiative and and, and look out for a representative. But in that note, I'm um, Keegan. Mm -hmm. um, should there be a person um, so in need, how do you guys reach out to that person? Right. And so we have a, a Facebook page, we have an Instagram page, and people usually reach out to us if they need assistance, when they learn about the program. And as I said, um, the regional representatives would be community advocates, the liaison between the community and TTY. And they would really know about the persons who are struggling within the communities, bring that information to us, and we seek the necessary sponsorships, and we then action a plan to ensure that these persons are well taken care of. Good, good. All right, so um, we, we, we are just about out of time, um, but just you, I just wanted to take the time to rehash where, you know, the pe persons so interested could apply and, and be a part of the, the TTYA initiative and the regional um, initiative that you, you, you just spoke of. Wonderful. So um, our handle is at Trinidad and Tobago Ambassadors on Instagram. You can look us up on Facebook as well, Trinidad and Tobago Ambassadors, and you can get all the necessary information as it pertains to how to apply to the program. And even if you don't want to be a part of the program, you can be, um, apply to be a part of the organization. As the flyer said, just submit your resume or CV to Trinidad and Tobago Ambassadors at gmail.com and we will respond to you. Right, and just note also, guys, that the deadline is um, Saturday, 30th of June. Correct. This Saturday, 30th of June at um, 11.59 p.m. So be guided accordingly. And please use the link um, also to, I think you could submit your application and everything there as well. Correct. Correct. All right. And you could also find further information about TTYA there. And, and before you close, I'm mm -hmm. putting a plug here. You know I'm inviting you to be a member of the channel and to be a youth ambassador. <laughs> you know? And so I look forward to I seeing have, you being a member. I have been considering it, uh, Mr. Dino, I have been considering Well, I hope that before 11.59, that consideration turns into action. Yes, yes, Wonderful. no problem, sir. Um, again, thank you so much for coming and, and joining us on the YouTube show on Tobago Updates Television. Um, we hope to see more of you, of course. And, you know, guys, please join and support because youth development and youth work is important for our society, especially in Tobago. So guys, thank you very much. And thank you very much for listening. Remember to share the live, share the live, share the live. The best place to stay in Tobago is at Thorns Place with rates starting as low as 200 TT. Call or WhatsApp 745-7306 or 682-8676. We are located uptown Scarborough, five minutes away from the port. Remember, at Thorns Place, our aim is to make your stay safe and affordable. Right now, Tobagonians are just currying down to Bonacord, right? In Stobie Local Road. You know why? To come down and shop at Authentic Builders General Hardware. The only hardware store in Tobago that is giving you guys Trinidad prices. So for instance, such as steel, half inch and five eighths, seven thousand eight hundred and ninety-five dollars. 5H construction ply for $260. Every single thing that you will need to do your home renovation or start your new construction, we have it right here. And to get your quotation, it's very easy. Just WhatsApp us at 272-1990 and we will do your free WhatsApp quotation for you.
you flood ready? Review and update insurance coverage. Install floodgates and barriers. Create a family flood plan. An initiative to help people prevent, prepare, recover. Tatil, where people are people. Are you looking for a place for your loved ones? Heavenly Care welcomes you. Located at Northside Road opposite Massey Motors, we offer a variety of services. These include doctor visitations, social activities, geriatric care, and much more. Contact us at 277-9595 or visit us at Northside Road opposite Massey Motors. At Heavenly Care, compassion is at the heart of all care. Put a smile on your face when you're moving from place to place. To place. Good morning, good morning, morning, good morning, morning. Good morning, Tobago, and welcome back to the Tobago Updates Youth the Morning Show. This past weekend, we had a Rotaract District 7030 conference happening at Magdalena Grand in Tobago. The conference comprised of uh, training sessions, a community service project, as well as a lot of, you know, fellowshipping, as the Rotaractors like to call it. We have some pictures of the community service project that would have taken place at the Plymouth Anglican Primary School. And the community service project was really the painting of murals, the Rotaract Club of Tobago would have, would have partnered rather with the Plymouth Anglican School earlier this year to do an anti-bullying campaign. And we finished off the community service project with the painting of murals last Sunday. Up next, we also have a video of the closing ceremony of the Rotaract District 7030s conference themed Mets Gala. And yes, it was indeed a Mets Gala because the outfits were to die for. People came out in the best of the best. Some of the countries that were represented were countries like Barbados, St. Vincent, Antigua, Trinidad and Tobago, of course, and the Guyana. So viewers, stay tuned and here's the video. We're here at the Magdalena Grand for Rotaract District 7030s conference. Conference this year is being hosted by the Tobago contingent. And we're just going to chat with some of the conference attendees to get what their experience has been like. So we're here with Miss Brittany Duncan and she is the president of the Rotaract Club of Tobago. Good evening, Brittany. Good evening, Kaylee, and good evening, Tobago Updates. Okay, so Brittany, the first question I want to ask you is, uh, what has your experience been like as the president of the Rotaract Club of Tobago? Because, you know, handing over is very soon. We're doing handing over just in July. It's been a full year. It's made the full circle. So what has that experience been like? The experience as the president of Rotaract Tobago has been absolutely wonderful, but very stressful. Um, we have had a very long year planning projects. We've had experiences where some of our directors had challenges and as president, I had to step in to still get the work done. Um, overall, I would say it was a learning experience and at the end of it, we got the job done. We, we did our youth service, we did our community service and Rotaract stands unmatched and we stand well, very well in our community service. Okay, and Brittany, you are also the um, conference chair for this year's conference, 2023, for District 7030, that is, in Sebago. So what was it like planning for Rotaract Conference? Because, viewers, we have a lot of persons here from different Caribbean islands. How many countries is the district made up of, if you can see off the top of your head? It's made up of 17 countries, and we have the 17 countries represented here today at our conference. So we have places like Suriname, we have Barbados, we have Guyana, of course, which is our largest contingent this year. And we have a number of people coming. We have Dutch speakers. Um, the planning has been frustrating because the conference has been hosted by Trinidad and Tobago. So it was a bit difficult to get the dynamic between the Trinidad colleagues and the Tobago colleagues. But in the end, we did work it out and as you can see, Kaylee, it's very successful and we're happy to, to be at the end of it. Okay, wonderful to hear. And um, your reviews on conference this year. I mean, as you, can, as you said before, it really is a success. You know, we could see everybody's most definitely enjoying themselves. So um, 
aside from all the stressful planning and all of that, um, rate the experience. The experience was wonderful. The best part of our conference to me was the community service project. I got to do a project that I, I had in my mind for a very long time. I'm from the beautiful community of Plymouth, and I've always wanted to assist in building Plymouth and the, the young persons there. So we would have contributed by doing our anti-bullying project at the Plymouth Anglican Primary School. We would have completed the mural today. And that was my most exciting thing about conference. Um, outside of that, we would have done our training programs. And overall, I would rate it a 10 out of 10. We got to train. We got to fellowship. And that's a word that we like to use in, in conference. Um, but we got to network a lot. And that was a great experience for all of us and for me. So 10 out of 10. Okay. Thank you so much for chatting with us, Brittany. And viewers, we hope to see some new Rotaractors in Rotaract this coming year so that we have more persons to take to conference in Guyana in 2024. Thank you. So we're here with Assistant District Governor Julian Skeet, and he's definitely no stranger to us here at Tobago Updates. So, Mr. Skeet, can you tell us in terms of your capacity as Assistant District Governor, what was it like, you know, communicating and collaborating with the Rotary Club to pull off Conference 2023? Well, I want to say particularly um, for the Rotary Club of Tobago, uh, the Rotary Club of Tobago would have hosted conference just about 10 or so uh, years prior to this. So therefore, this is um, a great achievement indeed. Um, I know at first there would have been questions and wondering whether or not it could have been done, uh, but I really want to send sincere commendations to President Brittany um, and the entire club for really uh, pulling off and working together. I also want to extend a specific commendations to the team as assistant governor. Um, I work and support the four clubs based in Tobago, the Rotary Club of Tobago, Rotary Club of Southwest Tobago, the Rotary Club of Tobago and the Interact Club of Southwest Tobago. And I want to say that the sponsor club for the Rotary Club of Tobago, which is the Rotary Club of Tobago, would have also received full support from President Jessia, um, uh, past President Vanessa and the entire um, club as a whole and by extension, the entire Rotary family in Tobago. So really, it was a coming together to support the work of Rotarac, and I'm very happy to see the final product being the execution yet again of another successful conference in Tobago. Okay, wonderful. Conference was most definitely a success. I know that I would have seen you at some of the events. You um, facilitated one of the training sessions. Can you tell us about that? Well, I think the session uh, that I would have facilitated dealt with membership recruitment, um, engagement and retention. And that's particularly critical within the Rotary International Organization uh, for the simple fact that we are as strong as our membership. And therefore, it's really an encouragement and a call to persons out there. Uh, we have Early Act, which is at the primary school level, uh, Interact, ages 12 to 18, Kaylee also being a past president of Interact. We have Rotaract uh, that goes now from age 18 and above, um, now serving as a proud Rotaractor, Kaylee also a classic example, and certainly going beyond that, professionals in our society uh, are Rotarians. So I really want to call and encourage those in Tobago that may have that, you know, you want to give back, you want to get involved, um, decide which arm or which aspect you'd want to get involved at, uh, whether it is early act for primary school, Interact, secondary school age, Rotaract Young Professionals or Rotary. Rotary International is about people of action and I really encourage persons to give back. Okay, wonderful. And um, you know, we're all proud of Mr. Julian Ski for all that he has done in the Tobago space regarding Rotary International. And he's wearing a little something here. Can you tell the viewers about that? All right. So this is actually a Paul Harris fellow. And tonight we would have seen one of our um, Rotary actors also being awarded a Paul Harris fellow. Uh, this is part of contributing to the work of Rotary, uh, the Rotary Foundation, so that we are able to help um, and, you know, to, to go further in terms of the cause of building out things like grants and so on for Rotary. So really, Rotarians are encouraged as well as now it's open to Rotaractors far and wide in terms of giving back, commonly referred to as PHFs, which is Paul Harris Fellow. Okay, thank you so much for chatting, us, chatting with us, Mr. Skeet. And um, yeah, we hope to see more of you, viewers, young persons, out at Rotaract Conference 2024 in Guyana. So we're here with District Rotaract Representative Justin Schultz. Hi, Justin. Hello. 
How are you? I'm fine, thank you. So, um, can you tell us about your experience at Conference 2023? All right, so it was absolutely amazing, fantastic, exhilarating experience. All 16 countries uh, from District 7030 coming down to Tobago to celebrate the past year, to bring in the new year, um, to give out awards, um, to have so much fun to build friendships, to build bonds. Um, it was absolutely amazing. Okay, so you spoke about the new year and some of the viewers may be confused because, you know, for everybody else, the new year starts in January. But for uh, persons in the Rotary family, the new year starts in July. So speaking of the new year, can you tell us what it has been like for the past year as the district Rotary representative? All right, well, it's, it's, it's been great. Uh, I've had the opportunity to visit um, 31 clubs um, in 17 countries, in 16 countries, sorry, to see all the amazing work that the clubs are doing. And they, they do so much great work. Um, and it was uh, actually a very positive experience um, seeing what they're doing. I got, I got to hear some of their problems and we came up with solutions and we um, came up with the solutions that help grow these clubs to make sure that they are... They are um, for the for for the remainder of the year, they can grow as a club, and for the next year, they grow as well. Okay, so the conference experience comprised of a lot of different things. You had training sessions, you know, you had the little vibes and that kind of thing. What was your favorite part? Oh well, there, there's something that we do every year called the theme party. Um, and that's really the, the um, well, we, we party every night, right? But that's really the, um, the, the main party where all, everybody comes together and we, we have so much fun. Rotaract, our slogan is actually fellowship through service. So we don't actually just do community service alone. We have a lot of fellowship and we believe that it is very important. So we build the relationship between Rotaractors around the district because building that relationship helps us to do bigger and better projects as well. So that theme party last night, yeah, yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> it was most definitely. And um, the community service project this morning, you know, just tell the viewers, you know, how important community service and giving back is to the Rotary family. And, you know, you could just touch on, you know, the importance of it, of the community service project that was done today at Diplomat Anglican Primary School. Right. So... Uh Rotary is about service and Rotaract is about service, fellowship to service and Rotary International's slogan is service above self. So it is our main arm, it's, it's what we are here for, to just to, to make a difference in the lives in our communities, in our countries and what that does is make a difference in our lives as well. And this morning we went to the Plymouth and Anglican School to do a, a anti-bullying mural um, because we believe that, you know, um, the, the, the children are the future of tomorrow. So we have to make sure that, you know, we spread that, the message, a, a positive message in the, the children in the island of Tobago. So we went and paint murals so that we could spread the message of anti-bullying in the Plymouth Anglican School. Okay, thank you so much for chatting with us, Justin. Yeah. <laughs> So earlier up in the year, we did an interview with um, Mr. Justin Schweltz and Kevin St. Bryce. And he's here with us again for the Rotaract District 7030s conference. Hi, Kevin. Hi, hi, how are you? I'm okay. So can you tell us what your experience was like as a conference chair? I could imagine it was very stressful. So just, you know, tell the viewers what that experience was like as conference chair. Um, I would say, yeah, there were some very stressful parts to it, but I think seeing some of the execution of the ideas that we had, you know, I felt proud about a lot of them. Um, obviously, they have smaller logistical issues that we probably didn't want to have, but um, I think overall, it's more positive than negative, you know, so I'm happy. It's a little bit too sweet, you know, all these months of planning, but um, I'm happy of, how, of, of the ex execution in the end, I think. Okay, most definitely. And um, conference would have comprised of a lot of different things. Can you tell us what was your favorite moment? Um, maybe not moment per se, but I think the my favorite project or part subcomponent, I would say, is the theme party. So we had all these ideas um, and like seeing it all put together, you know, the bonfire and the food and the like everything just come together and seeing it in real life, you know, from this, uh, this idea that we had, like it just, it was really fulfilling to see it okay we had the theme party coming out tell us i think a lot of persons enjoyed the theme party what fun it was <laughs> okay and um well you know as you said it's a bittersweet moment because we end in conference today this is the 
end of everything and you know we have to move on to next day so um tell the viewers a little bit about um rotaract in general you know why is it important to be a part of rotaract yeah so this is actually my final few days as part of a rotaract club so for me it's been a almost 10 year journey and i would say they have so many things for so many different types of people you know if you like just community service things if you like professional development if you want networks if you want to have fun if you want to travel like all these things are part of this one group so if you you could more than likely find something for you here projects to execute you know based on something that you really care about you know so um it's not i mean it's not for everybody some people might find something else that's more suited to them but it's more than likely that you can find something that you can do here in Rotorak, definitely Okay, and um, aside from the theme party and the fun and all of that, um, there was a mural this morning at the Plymouth Anglican Primary School that would have been a community service project that was done. Just talk a little bit about that, you know, community service in general as being part of um, Rotaract. Yeah, yeah. So that's that's probably one of the biggest parts of it. Um, I would say a, a, a vast majority of people joined for that reason. I'm one of those people also. So um, I always am happy and excited to, to do those kind of products and give back so this was no different and I think the the lead for that project Candice Ragman she was excellent so from start to finish executing putting everything together you know having meetings on time making sure keeping everything up to date so um, it was a really good project and I think projects like that you know where we speak directly to the community who says what they need and we work with them and do direct you know because sometimes we might do a project just because we think it's good but when you do it with the you know, end user, and they tell you what you want, and we do it. You know, it's, it's really good, and then they are so excited and happy when it's exactly what they wanted to. You know. Okay, thank you so much for chatting with us, Kevin. And before you go, just you know, encourage some of the viewers here because you know we have persons you in from all over the world. Just encourage persons to join Rotaract. Yeah, I would say, um, like I said, I think Rotaract has something for everyone. So I would say, even if you're not sure what it's about. I would say you should come to some meetings, check it out a little bit, check out, you know, the social media and look at the projects. And I think you would more than likely find something that is worthwhile, something that you would be excited about and being part of. So I would think everybody should at least give it a try. And I think more than likely you might, you might like what you find. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. And congratulations on a job well done. Thank you very much. <laughs> So we've come to the end of the Rotaract District 7030s annual conference held right here in the sweet island of Tobago. Make sure to stay tuned for more Rotaract updates as we journey to Guyana in 2024 for another District 7030 conference. Tobago Glass Supplies has been a leading name for over 37 years in the glass and aluminum market in Tobago. We provide an extensive range of high quality innovative aluminum and glass products for commercial and residential use. Competitive prices with superior and professional services by committed employees who are guided by rigid quality standards. Tobago Glass Supplies specializes in the manufacture and installation of glass and aluminum products products that are essential to today's homeowners and the business environment. We are engaged in marketing, sales and installation of a variety of products. These ranges from windows and doors to necessities such as mirrors for homes and vehicles, designed and manufactured in-house or imported. JB's Holiday Resorts has one, two, and three bedroom fully self contained apartments located at the heart of Crown Point. Minutes walk to the popular beaches, restaurants, bars, and the airport. Enjoy our amazing amenities such as fully equipped apartments, complete with Wi Fi, AC, TV, and a pool, and a minimat on the compound. Call 639 8292 or 8929. Jimmy's Holiday Resorts is your family is home away from home mi4 security services company is the most advanced security service in tobago 
Ask about our cash and transit service. It's safe, risk-free, reliable, and timely. We provide safe banking delivery for all business types and sizes with highly trained staff, 24-7 monitoring, coordinated emergency response, and a well-maintained fleet of armored vehicles. Contact us at 660-7723 or visit our website at www.mi4securitytt.com to sign up today. You can now get whatever you need whenever you need it anywhere in Tobago with Tapago. Your meals, medication, groceries, and shopping all delivered directly to you. No more hassle, no more stress. Get the Tapago app today on Google Play or Apple App Store. That's T-A-P-P-O-G-O and let us deliver to you. Check our website at www.tapogo.app or call the experts at 494-T-O-G-O and 484-4746. Tapago, relax. We will get it to you. Tapago's at your service. Put a smile on your face when you're moving from place to place. place. Good morning, good morning, morning, good morning, morning. We come from a place alone. Vibes don't get a step or stop. Like something is trigger away, trigger away. Like you with them. Good morning and welcome back to the Tobago Updates Youth Morning Show coming to you live from the Port Mall in Scarborough, Tobago. Now I'm sure you've been hearing people saying that i so sure that I'm going to be there that I could go there all now. And yes, viewers, this is about the highly anticipated event to kickstart the summer off, to kickstart July, and that is Paint. And joining us this morning is the event coordinator, Mr. Chris Phillip. A uh, special morning to you, and how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Morning, morning. All right, so Paint, P-A-Y-N-T. Tell mm. us a bit more about that event. All right, so Paint started in 2019. Um, it was just an idea to try an event in Tobago. Mm -hmm. And we wanted to do something where, you know, people were not aware about what we have on and everybody in the same, same clothing, mm -hmm. you know, one. And that's what the whole thing came about. Okay. And you would have, no you would have noted that it started in 2019. And, yeah. and I know during that period, a lot of businesses would have faced that um, tragedy of the COVID-19 pandemic. How did you navigate yourself out of the COVID-19? Oh, well, it didn't really affect us much, mm -hmm. really, because the first um, break we got to do an event, we did it on... It was a success, even during the pandemic. Okay, great, yeah. great. So for paying the event, we know a lot of people, they're speaking about it, they're posting about it. It's all over social media. Yeah, everybody <laughs> everybody wants to attend paying the event. What can <laughs> patrons expect from this event? Um, well, if you've been coming to the last four installments, mm -hmm. um, we try to always go up a bit every year. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it's normally paint, water, powder, we have foam, okay. you know, I just want to give out the surprises that we have, but <laughs> yes. a lot. every year we always add new things, new things. a lot of new things. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yes. And, you know, for anybody that attended Paints, you could, you could attest that it's always a surprise when you attend that event. It's always a surprise. So tickets, people, um, you know, we're winding down. People probably think tickets probably sold out. Yeah, they can't actually, get tickets. Actually, they're almost sold out. Almost sold out. So, so we have to, mm -hmm. most likely we'll do another batch of tickets probably tomorrow. Okay, so... Picture. Until that batch is out, how can people go about getting tickets? For the right, our tickets are available from the committee members. Mm -hmm. um, all the names are listed on the Instagram page. Mm -hmm. At present, the only outlet that has tickets right now would be Pablo in Argyle. Pablo, uh, Pablo else will out. supermarket in Argyle. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. And the response, the response to this event, you know, people overwhelming. are just overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. And what other responses have you been getting? Nothing negative, just mm -hmm. positive um, things. But every year, I always be like, okay, mm -hmm. how do we top the last one? And every year, it always seems to have a bigger buzz than the last time. Than the last time. Yeah. 
and you know the the beauty of this event is that it's kick starting the summer it's yeah july 1st you know this is gonna yeah, set the trajectory strategic for that to start the summer <laughs> to start the summer yeah. and you know it's called paying for the summer mm -hmm. so i so we understand the marketing and strategy behind that and when it comes to promoting the event what are some people you have collabed with to to really um kick start to kick it off um well we collab with um be mobile mm -hmm. campari and blue water so far um well, we did a <laughs> we did a airport installation. If you saw it, yes, 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 yeah, saw that, that was a huge media. deal for us because it's something we always wanted to do, and we got a chance to do it. So that itself brought a lot of foreigners to, to see the brand and see the event and stuff. So that was a plus for us. Okay, nice, yeah. nice, nice. So yeah, yeah. we did see that thing at the airport, and it was during that period when a lot of Trinidadians coming yeah. over, and the foreigners, you know, the first thing that they're gonna see about that to be yeah. sign was the paint the paint um brand so that's that's really good yeah i think we saw somebody in in greece mm -hmm. reposting photo wow yeah. wow so you see it's getting out there it's getting it's getting <laughs> there that's really good and um when it comes to social medias and contact information how can people who would like to um attend this event how can they reach out to you all right so for instagram the page is dynasty events 868 mm -hmm. um for any information i could call my phone at 741 and I get take everybody to be know the committee members to reach out to get any information that they need. Right. Yeah. And um, the demographic, the age group of people that are attending. I know people have misconception that it's probably like a kiddies event. Or yeah. tell us about the age group. Right. For Our this age event. group is eighteen to thirty-four. Mm -hmm. In terms of underage, we have strict rules in place for underage, and we don't have kids in the event. Like yeah, we, we know that. But we the, that. <laughs> yeah, we we mm -hmm. have things we put in place for that. But really and truly, the younger crowd now. Is the party crowd right now? Yeah, so we won't we won't deter the eighteen year old, nineteen year old because those are the parties for the next generation, four or five years. Yeah, the next generation. So um, as at this point, at this point in time, is there anyone you would like to thank that who have been assisting you throughout this journey? Yeah, my committee. Mm -hmm. The committee has worked really, really hard above and beyond. Mm -hmm. I can't call everybody name, but the yes. committee. Mm -hmm. I'm just a person who's just trying to be in the or try to be in the back, but mm -hmm. as I always end up in the front. But the committee has worked really, really hard to make sure everything's done on time. And mm -hmm. I don't have any issues with them, so I have to give them a huge shout out. Okay, big yeah. up the big up the um, yeah. committee, big it up, big it up, big <laughs> them up. And um, next question is for the young entrepreneurs, for those who have businesses, those who even want to get into party. Yeah. What are some motivational words you want to leave with them? Well, for me, I will always say that whatever you want to do. Just do it, those second guess it. Mm -hmm. I used to be an overthinker and you can't be scared, just go for it. Mm -hmm. You will know where, you will know what happened till they try it. Mm -hmm. Alright, so in terms of events, it's something really stressful, but if you like it, just continue with it. Continue with it yeah. because the thing is, I don't know if you notice a lot of people they are now looking up to you because you have this successful event. You and know. they put pressure on me when you're doing that. <laughs> yeah. Because people yeah. call who advice, mm -hmm. how do I do this? How do I get to events and I mean, mm -hmm. I had someone that showed me the ropes, some trainer, that's Mr. Shadid from Yup Trinidad. Okay, right. right yeah, right. he would have taught me everything I know right now. And mm -hmm. now I try to pass on to who will come to me and ask me questions about events and stuff, but it's really tough. Okay. I ain't going to even lie and say it's easy, it's really tough, but it's big with it in the end. Be with it. Yeah. The thing is, you're like you're up there now with Island Crashes, you know, during this Can period. Kind of yeah, I think so, because <laughs> during this period, you know, especially when they're in school, all you hear people talking about is island crashes, island crashes, icy, icy, icy. But now we're hearing painting the bus too during this the same period. Yeah. And um, you know, you said it started in 2019, we're just in 2023, and you're doing so great. You know, everybody wants to come to um, the events now. Yeah. And um, you know, we just really have to congratulate you on Thank you very much. On, on that. And um, I know we're still with the paints and the surprises, but I must ask, what who are some of the DJs that are gonna be there? All right, so we try to keep it both Tobago and Trinidad mm -hmm. a mixture. So we have from Trinidad, we have Keenan. Mm -hmm. I had he's been with us since the very first event. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's been there for us. Um, we have Starbright and Echo from Trinidad. Okay. Tobago, we have Stupi, a 3D, not the usual Tobago DJs. I don't mm -hmm. want to tell everybody. <laughs> yes, yes. All yes. the yeah, like we'll the probably DJ cast probably tomorrow. We'll put all the cast. Okay, nice, nice, nice. So yeah. Mr. Philip wrapping up what. What would you like to leave to the people viewing, the people listening to this rear, and the people in listening, the people who would like to attend this party? What would you, what words would you like to leave with them? Well, I want to say first thing, thanks to Tobago for the response that they gave Paint over the years. Um, in terms of the event, I would urge everyone to get their tickets now between now and Friday. Mm -hmm. 
right? Um, we have a band collection tonight that they come put in, so folks can collect the band beforehand, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. Right, so Mr. Philip, I want to congratulate you once again on a job well done. Thank you you know, we much. eagerly look forward to see how this event is going to kick start this summer. And viewers, you know, of course, to be a good place, like to be in everything. So maybe, maybe not, we will be right there to keep you all updated. Uh, and most definitely. You, <laughs> yes, and let you all see what paint to summer is all about. So viewers, this was Mr. Chris Philip. Um, so we're going to take a quick short break. So remember to share the live, share the live, share the live. We'll be right back.
Welcome to Good Morning Tobago on Tobago Updates, your source for current affairs in Tobago, Trinidad, and the region. With the perfect conversations to complement your morning routine, I am Candice Jackson. And well, viewers, I just want to start by apologizing, first of all, for technical difficulties from the morning show with the youths. Um, we just, again, we just want to apologize. We are still working on some kinks, but we are trying our best to make sure that we can bring you some of the best quality uh, TV for you here in Tobago. All right, so viewers, now we've got a jam-packed show for you on GMT this morning, and we are going to be starting our conversations with Mr. Braden Roberts, who's a Tobago officer for Tutor. Now we are going a special. Well, I should start by saying a special good morning and welcome to you. How are you doing? Good morning. It's always a pleasure to be on set. <laughs> Great. Now we are going to be turning our attention to the budget this morning. Of course, tomorrow, um, the budget debate starts. We'll be hearing a bit more from the secretaries as to the details of the plans that were mentioned by um, the Chief Secretary, Fali Augustin, on Monday. But for now, we have some information, some plans or outlines for education, and we're going to get into those discussions here this morning. Now, I want to start with, um, well, I'm going to start with one of the first things the Chief Secretary mentioned, and that is an in-person model for teaching and learning for an online model. Good morning to the viewers <laughs> and the listeners. Um, we, I know that there's a committee that is working on the online engagement. However, we, we need to ensure that we go through all the policy frameworks and so on before we even venture that far, right? I know that sometimes we have ideas and then we rush them to the public without any background work. So I'm, I'm, I'm not certain as to how soon the, the vision that the, the Chief Secretary would have mentioned, how soon that would be a reality. But at least there is need to embrace technology. And I would hope that out of the committee functioning now in terms of building a policy framework, a draft policy framework, that other things to go in the background. Because it's not just to have an idea how it is to be done. Technology needs to be built out in such a way where you can afford online engagement. So it's not that um, getting a policy alone, there's a lot of infrastructural work to be done. So I would agree if it is budgeted for now um, and it's to actually work on. Mm -hmm. Now, one major, one, one, one uh, point that stands out about this online facility is to allow students the ability to work independently and um, teachers have a system for the teachers to be able to, you know, check in with the progress of the students periodically. You know, um, what are your thoughts on this, this plan that was announced? Until we get... I, I, I do not like premature submissions. Right, okay. Until we get the framework built out. Because as I, as I would always say when I come here, we had submissions already of Tobago-centric curriculum. Until you have something built out in a particular way, I don't know that we should just go train out the idea. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot to be done. We are, we are very far behind in preparing for online engagement. We went through the pandemic and we are still very far behind. How far are we behind? Well, we don't have a policy yet. We don't have that framework. We don't even have on paper what it's supposed to look like. And this is three years after the start of the pandemic. Yes, and then we still have Connectivity issues, you know, there are still black spots in, in different areas of Tobago where you don't have proper connectivity and so forth. We have a high dependency on teachers still mm -hmm. to have the devices and so on to, to, to do the same job. We have a lot of students who don't have access to devices, so you may give devices, the government may give devices, and within a term or two, the device may, may need to be replaced. So we have those different challenges. So. We have not yet built out what on, it's, it should look like on paper as yet. So it's, we are very far behind. Until the policy is done, we know exactly all our needs. I don't know that we could just go and see what's going to happen in the next year. Mm -hmm. I'm, not that, I'm not that confident based on where we are. Tell me about what is in place right now for the use of devices. Like, or oh, how prevalent, I should say, is the use of devices in, in, a, in the way that we teach? What is in place now is what has been in place for several years, a high dependency on teachers. 
So we hope that teachers go buy their devices, go and buy whatever you need to have and, and facilities as best as possible. Um, what the government would have done is would have assisted with training for teachers to use certain platform. Um, in certain instances, they would have given out devices, but that would have been in the early stages. They haven't given out devices in the recent past. Um, the division would have arranged for teachers who, based on high use of their device, if their device go down, that they could carry to the division. I don't know if that ever um, enact, was enacted, but there was a conversation about teachers being able to carry it to the IT specialists at the division. Um, so, other than that, we depend on teachers. Teachers will go get their stuff and see how best we can make it work. I know at the start of the pandemic, uh, at least in the, within the first year, there was a lot of laptops and tablets distributed to students. How has that um, helped any, or what's the status of that? Has that well, first of all, that initiative would have never been sustainable. You know, we can't be so dependent on the government to just be buying laptops and give to people. And especially when we have, where within a term or two, the laptop is no longer usable or needs significant repairs. So I, I, I would not say that the division faltered or so forth. They would have done what they could have. We saw where the ministry said the laptop for everybody and they, they couldn't meet that target. Um, the division took a while before they started giving out laptops too. Um, we were advocating for, for the devices, for our teachers for a very long time until they made some available. But it would have never been sustainable for our government to give everybody a, a device, especially when we have persons who burn through those devices in a term or two. So mm -hmm. I, I would not say that there is a fault today on the, the administration in, 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 in so doing. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the announcements that came out of the budget is that of a new Scarborough Secondary School and the idea of making that a smart school. Has Tuta been involved in those discussions for the design of the school? First of all, I hear the mention of Scarborough Secondary School. There has been no confirmation as to where the land would be. We had a verbal submission where we had a meeting at Shaw Park that the land would be behind the Bacolet Health Center. There was a site visit. There is no evidence that the soil testing and, and so on to ensure that the land there could hold the structure. There is no evidence of anything being done more than a verbal submission that the school will be built there. I know that the alumni and the PTA but I've written to the division recently asking for updates on the, on the matter. I don't believe that they got a response to date. Mm -hmm. But since that meeting in January, we have not gotten any idea of any work being done. We, there was a committee set up. Members of that committee to work on the design of this new school would have indicated to me they have never met. I'm not certain if there's one person in some division somewhere who is doing the design on their own. But persons have indicated to me they have never been called for a meeting. Is this the first time you heard about the idea of making Scarborough Sec a smart school? No, it has been there for some time. Um, the, I believe it was the alumni did a draft of what they would like the school to look like. The different aspects of, of the, how technology is to be incorporated in the school, the particular rooms they would like to see in the school, the, even the additions of the, the sporting facilities to the school. So all those draft ideas were sent, I believe, submitted by the alumni. That was to the last administration, and then this current administration, I believe, it will be submitted to them. But we have not yet gotten to the point of getting an idea where they should be the design of this new school. So the, the, the new Skyward Secondary School, as far as I am aware, is a thought. I haven't seen any action towards there being any steps for a new school in the near future. And it would take about four years from turning this sud to it being completed. And for students to actually be using the facility. Right, so it's concerning that we are not seeing any actions. There's nothing to suggest that we are, we are there with this campus secondary school, new, the new campus secondary school issues have been indicated to the parents and the alumni. We need to focus on the current school, highlight the issues of the current school and how it's affecting delivery how it's, how it's uh, the risk to health and safety, that's the only way we're going to put some pressure to the new school being a reality. Because if teaching continues as normal with the, second, with the current school, there's no urgency. 
So tell me a little bit about those challenges that you're facing. What is what about the current infrastructure of the school is making it difficult for there to be optimum learning at the school? Well, if I'm to just start with the health, the, the safety aspects, we know that the, the fencing at the school, it's, there's, there, there's breaching in different areas, mainly at the back of the school. Um, with the moving of the, the earth in the area, the coastal you erosion. See, yeah, you would see little tiles popping up in different areas. I haven't heard of tiles popping up in the recent, recent past. But we have low-hanging fruits like fire extinguishers, fire detection system. Those things are not yet fully in place, you know. We, have we would have written to OSHA, and not to my surprise, OSHA would have been given the division extension after extension after extension. On some of these things, we would have written a list of things to, these, to, to OSHA. We would have to write them another letter to, to get a follow-up as to what is their stance on all the outstanding things at the school. One of the significant things that are affecting curriculum delivery is the quota of teachers. There are so many subject areas that don't have the requisite number of teachers. So we have teachers having to maximize into the number of classes they have to do for a particular week. And there are some subject areas that just won't have a teacher for the class. I know that they would have either borrowed a couple of teachers from 211, um, I think it's Titter to do some classes at, the, at Scarborough Secondary School. I don't know how long that lasted, if it lasted any period of time. But the number of teachers, the requisite number of teachers at the school, that is a significant drawback to the delivery of the curriculum. All right, well, we're gonna stick up in right there because we gotta take a break and we'll be back with our conversations with the Twego Officer of Tutor, Mr. Braden Roberts. So don't go anywhere. Are you flood ready? Monitor trusted sources for info. Wear protective gear when you clean up. Contact your insurance provider to assess the damage. An initiative to help people prevent, prepare, recover. Tattil, where people are people. Coconuts Cafe, the buffet restaurant that specializes in all your tasty local dishes for breakfast and for lunch. Breakfast includes coconut bake and sada roti served with chokers, bulge oil and sausages in tomato sauce. Not forgetting beef and cheese pies, shepherd's pie, macaroni pie and rice in various styles. Meats served in a variety of flavors, garden salads and pasta salads. All this accompanied by fruit juices, coconut water, your choice of a great combination to appease your taste buds. So call us today to order as we are here to accommodate your busy schedules or if you are having a cooking day off. How it's gonna go They better look up and look Cause this is your show And everybody's gonna know Say it to them once again This is your show. Welcome back to Good Morning Tobago on Tobago Updates. Viewers, we are continuing our conversations with the Tobago officer for tutor, Mr. Braden Roberts. And um, we are getting into the budget that took place, budget presentation which took place on, on Monday. And we're also looking forward to what's going to happen tomorrow when we're going to hear a bit more about what the, the, the THA has in mind for, for the next fiscal year. Um, as, as outlined in their plans. Now, we touched on a few things that were mentioned by the Chief Secretary, but I want to go now to the allocation, and the allocation, what they are requesting for education is a total of $574.31 million. 
to take us forward. And of course, that would cover the recurrent expenditure as well as initiatives. So, Mr. Roberts, what do you think about that allocation based or, or that um, request, I should say, based on um, the past, based on what has been required every year to keep the division running and to make the necessary improvements to education in Tobago? Well, as you all would see in the way in which I advocate, I believe in asking for what you want. So I would support the Chief Secretary in putting forward what you want. What needs to, to go with that, though, is a proper breakdown to ensure that central government understands that they need to get this. We need to get a what if. So what if they don't get 500 million? What if they only get 200 million? What would be the effects on to be going in terms of education. So we need to get a proper breakdown of that. I hope that that's what they are working on mm -hmm. behind the scenes or they would have worked on it already. Um, the advocacy, and I will support the teacher in advocating strongly for education because that's my field as well. And I, as I said, I believe in asking for what you want. Now we have a, a scenario where the division over the years, especially in the recent year, been kind of, as we say, hands them out. They, they wait for money to be able to cover certain expenses and sometimes they are behind in their expenses. So what I'm hoping to see is, what are the areas of the current Division of Education? What are the areas? The money that we are asking for, how much of that will be needed to cover the areas? Because as we indicated, I indicated on the show before, we have increments, gratuity, areas for teachers, which would be close to $9 million. And that is just teachers. The division of education is dynamic. So you have the staff at the building there that you need to see about. You have the school infrastructure stuff to see about. So it's not just teachers to look after. So if you have nine million or that five hundred or something, just for increments and gratuity, that's that, that a small item. There are so many other items. There, there is the the planning for persons each year getting an increment, which means you have to budget for that. Mm -hmm. Does this budget factor in? Persons who have to get their arrears in the next two years, in the next, the, the, the increments for the, for the next year, whose documents may be processed, let's say by November, and we then join in the list of persons to be paid. So while the arrears, increments, and gratuity may be about a 9 million figure now, it may grow to about a 10, 12, 15 million figure after persons' documents are processed. Now, increments and gratuity, that's one thing. We have also an aging infrastructure for most of our schools. We would have seen the weather pattern in Trinidad and some of the things that came out of that. We are not so prepared in Tobago to really, with the online engagement, to withstand too many of our schools having any bad weather that have a significant disruption. The administration spent a large sum last year, or committed to a large sum last year, with the school repair program. There are a lot of schools, especially we have Roxbury Secondary School, who have, there, there's a good bit of money to be spent there. Mm -hmm. I saw they highlighted me to government for an upgrade and so forth. There's a lot of money to be spent. The money that, that I would have seen they allocated there may not be enough. So there are a lot of expenses needed. But I would prefer if, uh, if we are all to advocate, because these are our Tobago people, eh? If we are all to advocate and have a full understanding that, hey, the Chief Secretary didn't just grab a figure and believe, well, I want maximum. Mm -hmm. There is a need for it. And just to get a, a better picture of some of the items that were listed for that $575 million, roughly, um, mm -hmm. allocated or request for education, I should say. Um, and of course, we know that a great portion of that would be recurrent expenditure. But aside from the recurrent expenditure, they are requesting $18.5 million for the improvement for primary schools. $8 million to the improvement of secondary schools, $5 million for the upgrade of Mason Hall go uh, Government Secondary School, uh, $4 million for the construction of childhood centers, $4 million for the pre-construction consultation of Scarborough Secondary, and $1 million for the construction of the school for the death. All right, so those breakdown would be better supported if we get an idea as to where we got the idea of a million for this. Where we got an idea for 4.5 million for this. Where did we get, how did we come up with 5 million for this? I think that would be able to get, because we need to put pressure on central government. Mm -hmm. So for everybody to get an understanding as to why 5 million for the upgrade of missional government, why five? 
if we could get that in wherever the budget debate or wherever it is that is to take place it could help all of us in advocating for this particular need because i as i said before i believe in fighting for what we what, what we want we, we we deserve to get a, a sum that could really afford the teacher to do all that they need to do for tobago because tobago needs to, to progress yeah and for us to progress we have to work together on it mm -hmm. so they can't give us a, a blanket figure we want five million for this and ten million for this and ask for to support it mm -hmm. i support the cry for the as much as you can get but help me help you by giving me greater details so a, a, a greater breakdown as to why five million as to why ten million as to all the other things that they are budgeting for why that amount we could all join that call because and that that's my plight really you know i don't want to come out here on, on a daily basis and talk about the division that paying certain things I want to also come and join with the division in advocating for greater releases so that they can afford to pay for these things. So we, if we have to work together on this, they need to give greater clarity as to why these figures. Now we have just about two minutes left, but I want to also talk a little bit about the gratuities. Uh, the Chief Secretary both said that you know, his administration has paid the most amount in gratuities and outstanding payments to teachers. So I want to get your perspective on that. Right, so I believe in transparency. I'm not denying it, but have we seen that there's this documented, documented evidence that we have paid the most, we have paid this amount, we have heard you pay that amount. If you owe 100 people and you pay 60 people, the 10 or the 40 or whoever else, the 40 that did not get, not comforted that you paid others. They want to at least know what is the plan to then pay me, all right? So I'm closer, I'm closer to getting paid. What is the plan to then pay me? When to expect this next payment? So to boast that we paid the largest amount, or if that's the case, I'm grateful. But the others who are waiting, at least give them an idea when. What is the plan to ensure that they get their payment? Because they would have recently given us tutor the idea that they had a 2.5 million to go and pay increments and gratuity, and they run into some financial difficulty and they repurpose the money. So we don't want these submissions that we paid some there are persons who work for their money already it's not something new that we're begging for you work for your money mm -hmm. let me get an idea as to how how much the debt is and how we're going to service that debt and basically that a is, plan for payments yes and that is the kind of conversation we want to have and even with with the t vetting schools having a, a a a greater technical vocation in our secondary schools and so on and even introducing tastes of it in primary school what is the plan for that? How are we going to include TVET in a greater way in our school system? We, we, we have a lot of things to really discuss. And if we use those items to push what the budget allocation is, you will be able to get greater support. So again, I support the Chief Secretary putting forward as much as in terms of the budgetary um, request because you have to cry for what you want. You have to advocate for what you want and push for what you want. But it cannot just be a figure that we, we put. We have to break it down enough where persons who are likely to benefit or persons who are like central government who have to pay this amount have a full understanding that yes i need to pay this and if i don't pay this these are the consequences all right i want to thank you so much mr roberts and hopefully we can see some of more some more greater well i should say a greater explanation of um those figures as we look forward to the secretary of education zorisha hackett when she gives her presentation in the house tomorrow in contribution to the debate on the budget and, and I hope that these submissions are on realistic things that have been started. At least they have something in the background where they started doing the framework and so on and not open air. So I, I would not appreciate such. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Roberts. And viewers, thank you for staying with us. But we are not done yet. We've got a lot more coming up for you after the break. Are you flood ready? Recycle and properly dispose of large waste. Avoid sweeping yard clippings or trash into drains. Plant trees to avoid soil erosion. An initiative to help people prevent, prepare, recover. Tattle, where people are people. Full disclosure with the executive every Thursday at 8 p.m. only on Tobago Updates. Real questions and honest conversations with the sole aim of keeping you fully in the know. Full disclosure 
with the executive every Thursday at 8 p.m. only on Tobago Updates. The best place to stay in Tobago is at Thorns Place with rates starting as low as 200 TT. Call or WhatsApp 745 7306 or 682 8676. We are located uptown Scarborough, five minutes away from the port. Remember, at Thorns Place, our aim is to make your stay safe and affordable. Right now, Tobagonians are just scurrying down to Bonacord right? in Stobie Local Road. You know why? To come down and shop at Authentic Builders General Hardware, the only hardware store in Tobago that is giving you guys Trinidad prices. So, for instance, such as steel, half inch and five eighths, seven thousand eight hundred and ninety-five dollars. Five eighths construction ply for two hundred and sixty dollars. Every single thing that you will need to do your home renovation or start your new construction. We have it right here and to get your quotation it's very easy. Just WhatsApp us at 272-1990 and we will do your free WhatsApp quotation for you. Are you flood ready? Review and update insurance coverage. Install floodgates and barriers. Create a family flood plan. An initiative to help people prevent, prepare, recover. Tattle, where people are people. Welcome back to Good Morning Tobago on Tobago Updates. Viewers, now uh, in Trinidad, down here in Trinidad, we are being uh, occupied by the local government election that's coming up. Joining us to talk about his, uh, his entry into the local government election is the political leader of the National Transformation Alliance, Mr. Gary Griffith, who you also know as the former uh, commissioner of police, um, it, it, within our country. Good morning and welcome to you, sir. How are you doing? Good morning. Always, always looking forward to be on your show. <laughs> how, is, how, how are things up there? It's good. A little bit cloudy this morning, but that's okay. The sun always comes out in Tobago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, definitely. All right. Now we're going to get started into um, the local government elections. Your party is fielding 31 candidates, but you're not just fielding 31 candidates. You are actually joining with the UNC um, in partnership going ahead in this election. And I want you to tell me a bit about that decision. Why did you choose to partner with the UNC going forward? Yeah, sure. Um, my military training has me, anything that you do, you're going to look three steps ahead. You're going to be, you're going to be very tactical. And, operate, and any operation you have has to be based on looking at data and analyzing the situation. So the math is simple. It is very simple. The, this so-called third party, but they call it a third constituency. We call it the bridge constituency because this is an alliance. That continues to build in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, in 1981, it started under the ONR with 91,000 votes on their own. Uh, it then, 10 years later, under the NAR, then moved to, to 127,000 votes on their own. 16 years later, in 2007, under the Congress of the People, then, it then moved to 147,000 votes on their own. So now it has changed to the NTA just uh, about 16 years later. So whether you call it the ONR, the NAR, the COP, the NTA, probably in 10 years, the initials will change again. But it means that there will always be that group of that third constituency that are not talking to the PNM or the UNC, and they are willing to make that shift. And that group has always been the catalyst towards deciding and they become the determining factor towards any election in Trinidad and Tobago. So for example, in, 19, in 1981, in 1991, and in 2007, when the ONR, the NAR, and the COP decided to go on their own, they got the 91,000, votes. They got no seats because our system was designed by the PNM initially to prevent that type of proportional representation. Um, so, however, when these parties aligned with the opposition of the PNM, they won. Every single time there's been a coalition in Trinidad and Tobago, PNM have lost. In 1986, uh, with the NAR, 33-3, 
in 1995 um, when the UNC again they, they aligned themselves with the Tobago parties to uh, the Tobago party to get in government in 2010 under the People's Partnership when the UNC joined with the COP and other parties in 2010 local government election with the same thing so the only four times that the PNM have been defeated in any national election was a coalition the only time other than that um, was in 2000 and the UNC government lasted just a few months every time there is not a coalition the PNM wins so the maths is simple so anyone for people who may have any concern they say well you know, we should have gone the, the straight and, and far and the narrow road and stay on our own that by doing that you're indirectly stating that we want Keith Rowley's PNM to remain in government and I know the vast majority of the country they do not want that so I am doing what is right for the country what the majority of the citizens want and so this is going to be a very strategic alliance at a, a coalition and people will have concerns based on what happened in the past under the People's Partnership. But that was because of the leadership at the time in the Congress of the People. And it's not, not to criticize, but again, communication is a critical element to ensure that there can be that type of dialogue to prevent confrontation, to prevent misinterpretation, and to prevent one body, one, one arm being stronger than the other. Doing this, bringing different parties together, and by the way, may I add that the NT, what we are doing is also liaising with other political parties who are not presently in this election campaign, getting them on board to become not not being not working for us or under us, but side by side, bringing it all together, which was really what the NAR's plan was about initially. There's a saying that the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, and that is what we intend to do. And by doing that, it is going to ensure the removal of Keith Rowley's government. Now, you've had a rocky history with uh, Mrs. Pamela Passat, which is the political leader of the UNC and, well, current opposition leader. And, um, you know, what makes this new, new attempt at having a union with the UNC, what makes this different from what happened in the past? Why did you put your trust after, after what had happened? And, uh, yeah, and, and that is a very good question. And the point being, I will ask everyone, if it is that at any time you see there's a, a difference in opinion, if you're going to use that as an avenue to walk and never come back. If that is the case, every marriage would have probably ended after two weeks. Everyone would have started doing an exam and they have problems with the first test. And if they, they don't like it, they will no longer continue the exam. They will leave school after the first confrontation with a teacher. They will end all friendships with everyone that they knew because they had their first argument. So that has very little value for me to decide to use that as the avenue. Because if that is the case, at least six or seven members of the present PNM cabinet, the senior individuals, were those who were actually on Patrick Manning's side when they, when they decided to target and throw Keith Rowley out of cabinet. And then you could ask the same question, but what Keith Rowley did is he understood the bigger picture. Listen, you all were against me. You all wanted to throw me out of the, of the PNM's cabinet, but I will still appoint you as my minister of whatever. And that, and that is what he did. So because if it is that you continue to do that, there will never be political parties. There will never be teamwork. There will never be anything that, that involves accommodation or, or unity, be it a marriage, be it friendship, be it any, anything that involves more than one person. And having said that, the good thing is that um, my style has always been one where I would be very open and cordial, respecting the, the, uh, the other side. And that is what I think um, Kamala Pusabi says and I have. Uh, I, when I was Minister of National Security, I will make open um, concerns of anything and I will bring it to her in the right forum, which would have been in cabinet. And then we have collective responsibility. So I'm fully aware of how this thing can and should work. And that is what we will do. The concerns people have of coalitions, if it is that we look along that line, coalition governments, it means that there are, there are different political parties that will have different views. But over 80 odd countries in the world had or presently have coalition governments. That's almost half of the countries in the world. Over 30 in Europe, over a dozen in Asia, the Americas and Africa. And, and it, it has, they have worked. Coalitions also have not worked. But in the same manner, governments standing on their own have also worked and not worked. This government is a perfect example. What we have seen is victimization, dicta dictatorship, arrogance, uh, political intimidation, political manipulation, um, incompetence, failing to deliver. So that right now you're seeing a government that is failing on their own. So why not have something when you have a coalition? A coalition ensures, ensures checks and balances so that one cannot just go ahead and operate as a, as a dictator because there's no one else to say, hey, we need to pull up, we need to check ourselves. And that is the difference what I will do because I have such a good 
communicational link with Kamala Prasad Bissessor. We will communicate on a regular basis to ensure that any issues that would have taken place in 2010 to 2015, they were, it will not repeat itself. You said on at the recent launch that this election would be the mother of all elections, the local government elections in Trinidad. Uh, could you give some context to that statement? Yeah, sure. You know, sometimes people just love to say things. This is the, I'll tell you why I've said that. One, this is the first election in the history of Trinidad and Tobago where a government is being forced to call an election against their will. They are doing it under duress. This is the first because the government has been forced to do that based on a decision by the court. This has never happened before. So that's one. Two, we have a government now that when asked to have um, uh, inter independent observers come in, they have refused. And the reason why this should be more than anything else is because this is the first time, as I said, going back to point one, the first time that our government does not want, did not want to have an election, but has been forced to call one. No greater time is required to have international observers and independent observers than now, because you're having a government calling that election because they are not prepared, they did not want it to take place. And he has refused to do so. By him refusing to do so, obviously it will, it will raise red flags to have people believe there's something to hide, there's some plot you have, something sinister. And by, by you doing that, it would obviously be a, a major concern. Three, the result of this election is going to tip off into the general election very soon. Because if it is that uh, Keith Rowley was annihilated in his last election by the, uh, in, in Tobago, and if it is that he, he decided uh, this election they lose, it will show that he is now, um, there's, a, there's a spiral downward, he's going to he's going 6 p.m. And with that, it can cause a whole turnaround even within the PNM because right now there's a war brewing, a massive war between two major, two major bodies within the PNM and that is going to cause many concerns within the PNM for those who want him out and those who are fighting to keep him because of their own uh, personal ambitions. So because of that, and finally, the fourth and most important point, never before has he, in the history of the country has the country seen a government that is so full of hate, um, vindictiveness, intimidation, political manipulation, directing um, state agencies to tap the phones of political opponents, trying to get the commissioner of police to arrest, um, to force focus on investigations of political opponents, refusing to give funding to the commission of police to investigate matters that can involve government officials, uh, trying to hire persons to, to, to make false reports and then try to lay it in parliament, where's the one place you can lie and not be sued, to try to discredit political opponents. People are fearful. They are fearful of being intimidated. They are fearful of the political in, um, um, persecution. And because of those four points, it is why it is that this is going to be considered the mother of all local government elections. All right. I want to thank you so much, Mr. Griffith, for being on with us, for sharing your perspective. We are certainly looking forward, and we in Tobago are paying attention to what's happening there and um, seeing your foray into the world of politics as you know, from a representation standpoint. So I want to thank you for spending some time with us this morning. And yeah, have a good day. So uh, viewers, um, we still got a little bit more coming up for you on the program. But before we go to a break and continue with the rest of the program, I just want to inform you of a special breakfast uh, that you should be a part of. Um, and that's happening at the Shaw Park Food Hub from on the 30th of June, this Friday. And it's from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. And on, on sale, you get baked, fried fish, salt fish, smoker in, vegetarian uh, selections, and so much more. So there's a $50. It cost, will cost you $50, but a $15 delivery fee. So you're going to want to get connected with that and be a part of that on Friday. All right, now we're going to go to a quick break and continue with GMT. It's a brand new morning, rise up to a brand new dawn and as the person start to rise, the energy fill the skies. I say thanks a favor to wake up and hear me neighbor. Are you looking for a place for your loved ones? Heavenly Care welcomes you. Located at Northside Road opposite Massey Motors, we offer a variety of services. These include doctor visitations, social activities, geriatric care, and much more. Contact us at 277-9595 or visit us at Northside Road opposite Massey Motors. At Heavenly Care, compassion is at the heart of all care. 
Chiris Holiday Resort has one, two, and three bedroom fully self contained apartments located at the heart of Crown Point. Minutes walk to the popular beaches, restaurants, bars, and the airport. Enjoy our amazing amenities such as fully equipped apartments complete with Wi Fi, AC, TV, and a pool, and the minimat on the compound. Call 639 8292 or 8929. Jimmy's Holiday Resorts is your family's home away from home. You can now get whatever you need whenever you need it anywhere in Tobago with Tapago. Your meals, medication, groceries, and shopping all delivered directly to you. No more hassle, no more stress. Get the Tapago app today on Google Play or Apple App Store. That's T A P P O G O, and let us deliver to you. Check our website at www.tapogo.app or call the experts at 494 T O G O and 484 4746. Tapago, relax, we will get it to you. Tapago's at your service. Yeah. Hey. Bagel updates. Good morning, Tobago. Welcome back to Good Morning Tobago on Tobago Updates. Viewers, like we are continuing our conversations about the local government elections that is happening in Trinidad. And one of the interesting things about that, that of course we in Tobago are paying attention to, is the unity of the people being led by Tobago's very own Nicosi Phillips has launched a candidate for the local government elections in Trinidad um, in the form of Miss Afia Griffith. And she is going to be contesting the electoral district of San Juan Lavantil. So she's joining us now. Good morning and welcome to you, Miss Griffith. How are you doing? I'm fine. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be good. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. First of all, I want you to tell me about your decision to join with Nicosi Phillips and the Unity of the People to uh, vent to venture into politics, a representative politics in the long local government elections. All right, that's okay. that we might have... The reason I decided to join the COSI and the UTP was... Okay, we seem to be breaking up there with uh, Ms. Sophia Griffith. And, you know, just to, to give an idea of, um, you know, just about her, um, some of the things that she is hoping to do or hoping to achieve should she be successful at the local government elections is that of community sports and tourism okay i think you're, you're back um so miss griffiths yeah hopefully we could hear you now right the reason i decided to... right do you hear me right yes hearing you now let's take a key the reason to join DTP, the leader with Nkosi Philip, was I have been following them for a while, and the the way and that she carries, they carry themselves, the party, the way they spoke, the way they were grounded for the people. They either realized that okay, this is what I want to be a part of. I want to be for the people, the people ground. You know, let's bring unity towards everyone instead of we are trying to tear down each other with party and politics. Let's put it aside and say, okay, let's work for the people and get this thing right instead of just tugging, tug of war behavior and tug of war mentality. Let's just come together as one and work together and get the job done at the end of the day. It's about the people, not just about party and party. Okay, I think we lost her again. Um, as you can see, Miss Griffith is in a vehicle, so the connection might not be so great. Um, but she was telling us a little bit about her decision to join with the UTP, who is being led by, of course, Tobago's. Uh, Nicole C. Phillip. Uh, uh, the UTP began in Tobago, um, started in 2015, and uh, Philip, the Cosi Philip has continued to contest each election that has taken place in Tobago, whether it be general election and or um, THA elections. And um, the, the Phillips is uh, spreading, the UTP is spreading their wings to Trinidad. 
um, in the same way that we saw that the um, the the progressive democratic patriots are spreading their wings to Trinidad as well. So I uh, yes, I think she's back with us. Uh, hopefully, hopefully the connection remains strong. Um, I want you to tell me a bit about yourself and why you chose to get into politics. Okay, I choose to get into, get into politics because year after year, you know, you're watching and you're seeing government come and government go. The most two successive parties they have right now, they're always at it. And then when you look at the leadership, you ask yourself, if this is what they do in the House a representative, this is how they, they, they represent themselves. Yet still, you ask yourself, what are they doing? Because when you, charity begins at home. So when you, when you watch what goes on with the political leaders, maybe opposition or who is the ruling party, it makes you look at, okay, you want change, you want something different. You want to, you want to see better men for your country, not as your community, but for your country. As a person who always on the ground with the people, you look at simple things, you look at the elderly, you look at the, the homeless, you look at everything that is going on, you look at the finances, and then you have to say, let me try and make that difference. Let me try and make that change. Let me see what I can do to make that shift. Even though it's one person, one person could be a voice for many. So. Great. And tell me a little bit about what you want to do for the community of San Juan Laventil. What are some of the plans that you're hoping to implement should you be successful at the local government elections? When electing, the first thing I would like to do is keep stay grounded. Stay grounded with the people. Because sometimes people win position and they forget they came from and who they spoke to and where they were going. Because when you're on the ground, you know, when it's election time, you see every day the ask you to talk to you, and then after election, that's it. No, under your guidance, under your guidance, we are going to still be here. We, I want to be working with them. I want to do, we want to do fundraisers. We want to do charity. Still, we want to get things done. We want to fix roads. We want to go, have a better community center. First of all, you know, their unfinished projects need to be finished, completed. We have roads that are still dirt roads. There's areas where it have no water lines, no water. You know, apparently like yesterday, we finished on the ground at 3 a.m. We were the first people there to walk and talk to the villagers who had no current at all. We had fallen trees, fallen lampposts. So we were dealing with the community one-on-one. -on -one. We had water, we gave them water, we walked about to make sure everyone was well off because at the end of the day, don't just see me for only election times. You have to see me constantly. I want to be there. They can call me any hour. They can get me. I, will, I'm, I don't have it in my pocket to say, okay, it's in my pocket here. But once we work with the people and they work with us and they see where we are going as a political party, we will accomplish plenty. So it's not just to me just to come here, win a seat, and then, okay, I am here in office. No, I want to be on the ground. I want to see. I want to know. I want to do. I want to move. Not just for election time when they come to call you, hi, good day. No. I want after elections, they can still see me. They can still contact me. They can see me in the road, stop me. Hey, this is what happening. I ain't had this. I need that. I have a family who needs something. That's where UTP is about. Not just having government funding also, but we could use our own fundraisers, our own pockets and family who displace on need. So it's not just about, okay, we're here for government funding. We just here, no. We're here now and we want to be here forever. We want to deal with them, win, lose or draw. Win, lose or draw this local government election, we are still going to work with the people, still going to do everything that I told them, we are going to get it done. One of the plans outlined um, here for you that you, you, you wish to implement is that of employment camp relief. Tell me a bit about that initiative. Okay, with the employment, when I first started campaigning, the, I did a survey to my community. I asked them what would they like done differently. And knowing you know, they were 
answers will be different from an adult or elderly. But employing and Tobago, where we see a lot of unemployed youths and a lot of people being home and there's nothing else to be done. So we're trying to put things to the party where we can get programs involved. We could be self-employed or we could pull some strings once it reached that once we could get a connection going where we could get simple jobs you know everybody looking at they want a government job it have more to just a government job but if you're in a position a job you can work your way up you could edify educate yourself and you work that dream job so the the employment part is not just i have a job here for you to do no it takes a lot you have to go to to the right and relevant people where you could put things in place to assist where for instance if it is we have a program where we can let the military come in and train the younger ones to go into cadets or get them an idea of we have a job okay i think we just might have lost miss griffith there well viewers um we were speaking with miss afia griffith who is a candidate under the banner of the Unity of the People, a party being led by Tobago's very own Nikosi Phillips, who is spreading their wings in Trinidad for the local government election. Nikosi has always been um, committed to making the Unity of the People a national party. And this is the first uh, part of that where we're seeing a candidate coming forth under their banner for the local government elections and Ms. Sophia Griffin was just giving us a little bit about herself, her desires um, the, uh, to make a difference within her constituency, to be an underground representative there in the community of San Juan Laventil. We're certainly looking forward to see if unity of the people can make an impact and can be able to achieve a seat in a local government election. Um, and then it might, it might set the stage for some future things to come. So it's something to watch as we're going forward. And we know that the local government election is definitely stirring up a lot of stuff in Trinidad there. Um, it's a very hotly contested election. You know, the major parties, the UNC and the PNM have always traditionally been uh, fighting almost tooth and nail for, for the local government elections. We also know that traditionally there's been a low voter turnout. Now, will the additional parties that are participating be enough to generate a uh, voter interest to change the way how those elections turn out uh, every single time. We don't know. Um, and we're definitely looking forward to see what comes out of that and you know who will win because oftentimes the winner of the local government elections is indicative of what is to come in the general elections. Now we don't have general elections until due, I should say. It's not due until 2025. Still got some time to go. Um, and we all know that a lot can change within two and a half years. So a lot on our, on our plates, a lot, a lot happening within our country. And yes, we have to stay tuned because we are Trinidad and Tobago. Even though we are Tobago based, uh, we in Tobago updates are based in Tobago. We always have to stay tuned as to what's happening in our country on a national basis. So I want to thank Ms. Griffith for being on. Thank Nikosi Phillips for um, allowing her to be on as well. Um, connecting her with us so that uh, we can we can get an idea about their exploits in Trinidad. All right, viewers, I want to thank you so much for being with us. It was a wonderful program this morning, and I hope you have a safe and wonderful day, and we will see you again tomorrow.